It's June and in the NHL that means it's draft season. Let's break it all down, particularly for our local teams. My name is Ardo Cal and to my left is the publisher of the Draft Analyst. He's a contributor for the Sporting News and Dauber Hockey. He also served in the Army for 13 years and he's Brooklyn born and bred. Steve Cornianos. I think you need to be a lot more interesting, sir. Yeah, never a dull moment, that's for sure. So everybody who's hoping that Rasmus Dahlin will either have a Rangers or Islanders jersey on at the start of the season, I'm pretty sure that's not happening. Pretty sure he's a consensus yeah. number one overall. But the Rangers have a lot to be excited about, particularly with that ninth overall pick. Conceivably, based on uh, what you've seen from these draft picks, the person they pick at ninth overall, how NHL ready would that level pick in this draft be? Well, we're seeing the NHL lean more towards these kids to make the NHL at an earlier date than in previous drafts. It used to take, the average would be about three to four years for these teenagers to uh, stay in junior hockey for a couple of years and marinate in the AHL, the American Hockey League for about a year or two, and then make it to the NHL. What we're seeing now is teams are more willing to let these kids play, and not just uh, in a depth role, but in a quality top six role as a forward or a top four role as a defenseman. We saw that with Alex DeBrinkett. Victor Mete and Sam Girard, they were 2016 draftees. They made it to the NHL this year. Jesper Bratt was a Devils, a low uh, a round Devils draft pick in 2016. Sixth round. Yeah, and he made the team uh, right out of camp and he had a pretty good rookie year. So because these kids are cheap, because they're young and they have a lot of speed and skill, you're going to see teams more inclined to have them play in the NHL. At least give them that first nine game look because you all know that if you play them more than nine games, you got to pay them the first year of their uh, entry level contract. So with the Rangers picking at nine, Without a doubt, that player, uh, from a physical maturity standpoint, from a mental standpoint, from a skill standpoint, should be ready to make the NHL right out of camp. I love looking at the different rankings because some players, you see them very high on some lists, and then on other lists, they're in the hundreds. And one player that comes to mind in this draft is Ryan Merkley. Uh, he's, a def uh, he's a defenseman, but his offensive prowess is second to none. He could be one of the biggest boom or bust picks in this draft. And I wonder, particularly with the New York Rangers, because uh, we, it has been said about Merkley that he he might have some defensive holes. Yes. Maybe he has an attitude problem behind the scenes. Whatever it might be, I wonder with David Quinn and the type of coaching and grooming that the New York Rangers will have with under David Quinn's tutelage moving forward, I wonder if a guy like Ryan Merkley will really thrive in that situation. And with the Rangers having two picks in the 20s, maybe that's a guy that they target. Yeah, absolutely. And Ryan Merkley is one of the uh, elite playmakers in terms of defensemen available for this draft. The issue with Merkley is his defense. So the question is, if you get a coach who's willing to take on his the defensive shortcomings and say, hey, listen, you're a great puck rusher, you're a playmaker, we want you to just be unbridled, go ahead and go, move the puck, create chances for us, we'll let the other guys on the ice with you worry about your defense, then that might work out. You know, there was a story about Brian Leach when he first came into the league. Michelle Bergeron was his coach as a rookie. And his very first game, Michelle Bergeron said, take the puck and go, this is your game and it turned into a, a Hall of Fame career. Now, we don't know if that would have happened with any other coach, however, but I think with a guy like Merkley, you want him to push the puck. Uh, considering all the quality prospects the Rangers acquired at the deadline in terms of defensemen, good, solid, defensive-minded defensemen who can move the puck in, Ryan Lindgren, Libor Hayek, and Yegor Rikov, if you pair one of them with a guy like Merkley, it might cover some of his warts. Uh, I don't think he's a top 10 pick like he, we thought earlier in the season, but he's the perfect Ranger pick, I think, in the later rounds or the later end of the first round. They took a gamble with Sean Day, who had sim similar uh, questions about his defensive zone play. Uh, he's had a very good career in the OHL, so I think a guy like Merkley might be a good pick for them in the later uh, end of the first round. Yeah, you mentioned Brian Leach, one of the few Texas-born players to play in the NHL. Of course, the draft is in Texas, and two active Texas-born NHL players currently play on the New Jersey Devils, Blake Coleman and Stefan Nason. Let's talk about the Devils. Last year, they had the most picks in the draft. They had 11 picks. They had the first overall pick. Of course, they picked Nico Heischer, who played every single regular season game yep. this past season. Now they're picking 17th. What do you think their philosophy is, given how great their season was this past season? What is their philosophy going into this year's draft? Well, Ray Shiro took over in 2015, and in each, his, in each of his first three drafts, he drafted a forward, a skill forward. So in 2015, he took Pavel Zaka. 2016, he took Michael McLeod. And then last year, obviously, he took Nico Heischer. All three were very good picks. So I think if you look at, if you look at the Devil Seas and the kind of uh, attack that they present to opponents, they like to push the puck. They like to play with pace. They like to play with a lot of skill. So you want to complement that with 
with guys in the back end. Will Butcher had a great rookie season. His minutes were a little bit sheltered. He played a lot of offensive zone time. However, if you look at their overall system and losing a guy like Diego Rikov, they need that top pairing defenseman, that guy, that like Scott Stevens type or that Scott Niedermeyer type that was so critical to them winning Stanley Cups in the mid to late 90s. So I think that this year is the year where Ray Shiro might go for need over skill, but the good thing about this draft is you have a lot of quality skilled defensemen who kind of fit the both, both the best player available and the uh, fill the need as well. So I think they're going to maybe go for a, a puck rusher. And again, remember, the Devils don't have a second or third round pick, so they want to make the most out of the pick at 17. And you said it best. I mean, this Devils uh, organization has really proven that they're able to find these young players and they make immediate impacts. I mean, Will Butcher was quarterbacking the power play in the first 10 games of the season. Sure. Nico Heischer is a first-line center, which is remarkable for somebody coming into the league right away and played every single game for the Devils this season, particularly in the regular season. Sure. I mean, that really speaks to how they're able to find and cultivate talent. Yeah, absolutely. And it goes back to what I said earlier about how teams are more inclined to let these kids play. Not usually, be, you know, like you have a kid who is an offensive star in the, let's say, the OHL. His first job in the NHL is usually as a checker or maybe he's like a third line center. Now they're letting these kids make the team out of camp and then they're giving them significant responsibility. Worst case scenario is you knock them down to maybe the second or third line, let them kind of develop and understand what they uh, need to work on and then work their way back into the top six. So I think with the Devils, listen, they've done a great job developing players. They've done really well at the draft the last few years. So now they're at the point where if they do draft a puck moving defenseman, this specific draft, these players, these defensemen that are available in 2018, a lot of them are going to be ready to play in the NHL next year. Now you have some that might want to go the college route for one year. Nothing wrong with that. We've seen guys like Charlie McAvoy uh, go to college after being drafted, and then he makes it to the NHL right after his collegiate uh, career is over. So I think the Devils are in a really good spot. They don't have, like I said, a second or third round pick. They're just trying to contend for a playoff spot, and it worked out. Uh, but I think with the pick that they get at 17, you're going to be looking at a puck-moving defenseman who could possibly make the team right out of camp. Talk to me about the Islanders. Very interesting situation. Definite needs on defense, in goal. Not many first-round prospects in the goaltender position, but very defense-heavy, particularly in the first round. The Islanders have the 11th and 12th picks. In that spot, are the Islanders able to find a talent that would be ready to play in their roster at D this season. Yeah, and, and the thing is, a lot of teams, a lot of scouts will tell you that uh, they advise not to reactionary draft. And reactionary draft means if you, let's say, felt like your team was weak in a certain area during that regular season, that that's how you're going to address the draft, um, the, the, the subsequent dr uh, draft. And th the thing is, you don't want to do that because it takes these kids usually two or three years to make it. Now, granted, like I said, teams are shifting where they're going to have players in the NHL a little bit earlier than you expected. So if the Islanders want to address the need for defense, I think this is the draft to address it. At the same time, though, you know, forward prospect-wise, Josh Hosang was a high pick of theirs. Michael Del Calle was a high pick of theirs. It's taken a little bit of a while for them to develop into top six NHL players. So I think they might have to re-engage and say, you know what, we have these two high picks. Why don't we do defense with one and maybe a forward with the other? They were gifted a wonderful player, Matt Barzell, a franchise, possible franchise player. Obviously, John Tavares, that situation has to unfold. You, don't really, you really don't know it at this point, uh, but they have Kiefer Bellows in the pipeline. He's a good goal scorer, so he's a good complement to a playmaking center. But I do think the Islanders need to address the fact that they don't have a lot of quality defense prospects in their pipeline, and the ones that they do have might be a few years away. I'm definitely in the camp of draft the best player available no matter the position. I know that this is a hotter topic now in the NHL than it used to be. Sure. Where do you fall on that? I mean, the term best player available, it's kind of got cliche. I think what teams want is an immediate impact player. They want a kid who could step right in and impact the lineup, impact the game, have an impact on, on uh, really every shift that they have. So you, see, you have a lot of kids in the draft that can do that with speed and with skill. Um, you know, if you go by stats, is, does, do, do quality stats or gaudy stats mean a best player available? I really don't know. But in terms of uh, physical maturity, in terms of the ability to make plays and think at a high level, you have a lot of kids that are going to be in that, that fit into that best player available slash immediate impact player category. You wonder, speaking of players that could make an immediate impact, you really see that caliber in the top 10 in the draft. Yes. There are a lot of names that you could see making an immediate impact in the NHL. Now, the Islanders have 11 and 12 right on that border. And I wonder if this is the year that the Islanders might look at that situation and say, we want to get into that top 10 and we have the ability to do that based on the cards they have on the table. 
But I wonder how much of that mindset changes with Lou Lamorello joining the Islanders organization. What do you think? Well, if you go back to Lou, when Lou took over the Devils in 1987, he was the president and Max McNabb was the GM. And so uh, the, the year later they switched. So Lou took over with David Conti. They were the ones doing the scouting and the, and the drafting. And what happened was uh, Lou, I guess, identified the Devils were in a rebuild period. They really weren't contending for the playoffs or uh, really for the cup at that point. So he held on to his picks. He didn't do a whole lot of moving and shaking. And those drafts that Lou first had with the Devils were very critical. Billy Guerin. Martin Brodeur, uh, Brian Ralston. So I think he's going to take a similar approach with the Islanders. Uh, of course, this is speculation, but Lou does not trade first-round picks unless he's contending for a cup. And the fact that the Islanders at this point are not contending for a cup, I think he might hold on to them. And like you said, there are players within that uh, top 10 to 15, especially defensemen, which is what the Islanders need, that will have an impact when they make uh, their NHL debuts either this year or next year. One thing's for sure, the New York-New Jersey local teams... It's going to be very interesting.